Salam sejahtera anda bersama saya Rizal Zulkapi dan ini Niaga Awal. Kita mulakan dengan perkembangan terkini yang kami terima daripada JKJAVMY iaitu pemberian dos vaksin sehingga semalam adalah 556,404 dos untuk ataupun yang diberikan pada semalam dan daripada jumlah tersebut 343,000 adalah vaksin dos ataupun untuk penerima dos 1 dan juga 212,000 adalah untuk dos 2. Dan kami juga um, dapati daripada laman web tersebut ataupun laman Twitter tersebut bahawa uh, Ops lonjakan kapasiti di Lembah Kelang uh, sehingga pada uh, tengah malam semalam memberikan 239,318 dos vaksin uh, untuk dos 1 dan juga dos 2 pada semalam dan juga liputan populasi dewasa semasa yang telah uh, diliputi oleh uh, Ops lonjakan kapasiti Lembah Kelang adalah uh, untuk dos 1, 87.8% populasi dewasa telah menerima dos 1 dan juga 32.6% populasi dewasa di Lembah Kelang telah menerima ataupun lengkap dua dos. Kami akan bawakan perkembangan tersebut dalam buletin awan yang akan datang. Dan seterusnya saham di pasaran Asia dijangka didagang rendah pagi ini dengan pelabur memerhatikan prestasi pasaran China. Ini selepas pengumuman berkenaan kawal selia syarikat teknologi oleh China akibatkan jualan pada awal minggu ini. Saham di pasaran New York sementara itu ditutup tinggi dalam dagangan Khamis dengan disokong pendapatan korporat Amerika yang baik. Dalam masa yang sama data menunjukkan ekonomi Amerika pulih ke paras sebelum pandemik pada suku kedua tahun ini. Pada penutup indeks Dow Jones naik 100 53 mata, S&P 500 naik 18 mata dan Nasdaq naik 15 mata. Namun pemulihan KDNK Amerika ketika ini adalah lebih perlahan daripada yang dijangka pakar ekonomi. Pasaran saham sebelum ini pada Rabu mendapat sokongan daripada The Fed yang menjelaskan sekarang bukan masa untuk menamatkan sokongan rangsangan moneteri. The Fed pada Rabu kekalkan kadar faedah rendah di Amerika dan jelaskan ekonomi terbesar dunia itu tetap mencatatkan pemulihan biarpun dengan penularan varian Delta. Dan White House sambut baik data pertumbuhan ekonomi Amerika terkini dan menyifatkannya sebagai tanda pemulihan. Menurut jurucakap White House, data terkini menunjukkan ekonomi Amerika kini tumbuh dengan paras terpantas dalam 40 tahun. Ekonomi Amerika tumbuh 6.5% pada suku kedua disokong perbelanjaan pengguna dan perniagaan. Dalam masa yang sama, permohonan bantuan pengangguran di Amerika jatuh kepada 400,000 pada minggu lepas. With today's data, the U.S. economy has now made up the losses of the last 18 months and surpassed the pre-pandemic GDP peak. In fact, in the first year of this, of the first half of this year, the economy grew at the latest rate in nearly 40 years. It took two years after the last recession to return to the previous level. Today, it took half as long. The reversal is no no accident. It's the result of President Biden's plan to curb COVID and deliver economic relief to families, small businesses, and economic and communities throughout the country. And this boom is backed by other signs across the economy. Consumer confidence is up, jobs are up, personal income is up, and unemployment is down in all 389 metro areas in the U.S. compared to last year. Namun angka pertumbuhan suku kedua tersebut adalah lebih rendah daripada 8% yang dijangka pakar ekonomi. Ia dilaporkan disebabkan rantaian bekalan yang terganggu akibat pembukaan ekonomi yang pantas. Ini menyukarkan syarikat untuk meningkatkan stok mereka untuk memenuhi permintaan pengguna. Perbelanjaan pengguna, enjin utama ekonomi Amerika meningkatkan sebanyak 11% pada suku kedua. Perbelanjaan barangan pengguna naik 11% dan penghematan naik 12%. Ini disokong lebih ramai warga Amerika yang mula keluar rumah dan berbelanja disokong proses vaksinasi. Dan sementara itu, Pusat Pengendalian dan juga Pencegahan Penyakit CDC Amerika Syarikat menetapkan hampir 70% daerah di negara itu akan terus dikehendaki memakai pelitup muka. Peraturan itu akan dikenakan terutama bagi mereka yang berada di tempat awam dengan ruang tertutup. Ia selepas 69.3% daerah di Amerika mempunyai kadar jangkitan yang tinggi pada Rabu. Secara keseluruhan, 52.2% daerah di Amerika mempunyai kadar jangkitan komuniti yang tinggi 
dan 17.1% yang lain mencatatkan penularan ketara. Penularan ketara merujuk kepada sekurang-kurangnya 50 kes baru bagi setiap 100,000 orang dalam 7 hari manakala kadar penularan tinggi pula adalah 100 orang daripada 100,000. Ia akan bermula pada Sabtu ini di mana arahan mengenakan pelitup muka akan dikuatkuasakan pada Mei. CDC mengatakan individu yang lengkap divaksin tidak perlu memakai pelitup muka. Namun ia ditarik semula susulan penularan varian Delta yang mudah menular. Dan seterusnya kita ingin melihat dan menganalisis rangkuman berita sepanjang minggu ini termasuk kawal selia dan pemantauan ke atas syarikat teknologi China oleh Beijing, KDNK suku kedua Amerika dan juga Parlimen serta ringgit bersama dengan Shan Syed, Ketua Pakar Ekonomi Juai RQI. Shan, thank you for joining us. Shan, recently the onslaught of regulatory actions in China rattled investors on uh, on Monday, hammering uh, big tech stocks and fueling, uh, fueling a, a fresh crash in the uh, shares of company that organize online and in-person tutoring for school children. Uh, the sell of knocked companies such as uh, Tencent Holdings Limited, which dropped 7.7%, Hong Kong uh, Hang Seng Tech Index, uh, which declined uh, about 6.6%, and the worst performance for the benchmark since it uh, uh, launched almost uh, exactly a year ago. And education stocks dive and new and oriental uh, education and tech group crash 47% in Hong Kong, uh, building a on a, on a steep fall uh, do you think the regulators made the right move with the unsettling market absolutely result uh, the regulators moved the right market um, made the right move because they thought that these companies were going into anti competitive practices and most importantly data security threats are rising last mm-hmm. year alone globally companies spend around 100 billion dollars on data security alone and i think in my in my view china is willing to inflict market pain to meet social and regulatory goals and whenever regulators come in they have done their due diligence and what the strategic purpose of regulators is globally that they want to maintain stability in the market they want to protect uh, the investors interest they want companies to be fully compliant and they and they need to be uh, regulated and most importantly we have seen in the last one and a half year reputational risk has uh, become bigger nobody mm. can afford scandals we have seen what happened in uk when uh, green sale uh, uh, fell apart and there was uh, uh, severe uh, regulatory concern secondly argos capital in us so i think regulators are willing to come in and they want to give direction to the market and to the all players the regulators the watchdogs are uh, awake they are not sleeping so i think it's it's a good move because this sends a signal to the market that uh, whenever the market is going off the track the regulators can bring the market back on track and they can give direction i was reading it was so funny that the regulator is giving uh, the company a direction how to treat food delivery uh, drivers mm-hmm. the metuan So it was very surprising it is the company's responsibility to treat drivers ni- nicely not as the regulator's responsibility to de- give, give dictation to a company like mituan uh, mm. how to treat uh, delivery drivers so i think regulators has done the right job and they want to send a clear signal to the market that they are here to stay and no nobody should go or nobody should uh, nobody is above regulators But tell us about the DD effects. Uh, what would uh, this mean for the big tech companies in China? We saw how Tencent uh, fell uh, about 7.7%. The uh, Hang Seng Tech Index uh, declined 6.6% before this. What would this mean for big tech companies in China now that regulators are a bit more um, you know, watching uh, or, or a bit closer to them? If you recall uh, Rizal what happened last year when Alibaba was about to go for the IPO and then they tried to give direction and dictation to the regulator what it should be done and regulators then uh, gave a very uh, hard warning to Alibaba so i think these messages are very clear yes investors get nervous when regulators come in but regulators are there to protect those investors regulators don't want once the investors they lose their fund then the regulators come in the regulators are doing preemptive strategy so i think what they done with dd the e hailing uh, uh, technology firm 
I think it was a clear signal that they have to be compliant and they should not get involved into anti-competitive uh, practices, which is, again, it, is, uh, it displays the behavior of industry, which could have a spillover effect on the social uh, side. So what the regulators are doing, that they want to meet their uh, social and regulatory goals in order to have a clear uh, direction and to bring stability in the market. Right now, the most important thing globally is the stability in the market. The markets are volatile. The markets are not settling down very soon. So in these uh, tempestuous times, the most important word is stability. But let's move away from the markets here, Shan. Let's talk about how this would perhaps affect, uh, or affect the uh, big tech companies and investments uh, going into uh, tech companies in China. Would this mean that investors would perhaps look at other markets, other more attractive markets for tech companies, or would they still go to China and invest in these tech companies? Uh, Rizal, if you were to ask me, Chinese uh, stock market is perhaps one of the cheapest at the moment. And most of the global investors are moving into the Chinese market. The bond market is very attractive because only 3 or 4% are being held by the foreigners. 96, 97% are held by the locals. So I think the Chinese will continue to draw uh, investors globally. Why? When your economy is growing at 7.9%, uh, the domestic demand is very high. The government is willing to support businesses. So I think when the global companies and investors, they look at the market, 1.45 billion uh, consumers, uh, income levels are rising. And China is quite far ahead in terms of AI, 5G and EV. So I think investors will be willing to look at Chinese market, not only in the first two, three years, but for the next 10 years. And Shan, let's discuss what's happening in the uh, U.S. Fed stated that bond buying would uh, slow down. Were you surprised or do you think, as you have been saying, that uh, Fed is panicking with a zero exit strategy? Absolutely, Rizal. We have seen in the last two months, Fed has made three or four statements. And all these statements, they lead to one uh, uh, direction. The Fed is panicking. Fed does not have an exit strategy. When you don't have an exit strategy, you send mixed signals. You are already perplexed. You don't know what you're doing. So obviously, this will create a panic. And 31 years back, one of the greatest Nobel laureates, Milton Friedman, already mentioned in his book, The Money Mischief, in which he stated how Fed is going to create crisis in the form of inflation. And if you see in the last uh, one and a half year, what is what has happened? Many investors are, have taken position. They have been 600, 757 billion gone into equities. The valuations are all time high. 621 billion went into bond market. Uh, consumers are sitting on cash. Uh, they don't know what they are doing. So I think this will create a financial bazooka. I wouldn't be surprised it create crisis in the U.S. equity and uh, uh, bond market uh, going forward. According to the White House, the U.S. economy has now made up the losses of the last 18 months and surpassed the pre-pandemic GDP peak. This is, of course, supported by consumer spending and also investment, business investments. But tell us more about this recovery. Do you think the spread of the Delta variant could hamper this recovery? Absolutely, Rizal. The global economic fragilities are going up. I don't see the global economy recovering before 23. As you rightly pointed out, Delta variant is making an impact in the market and it's spreading in U.S. So once it goes out of hand, again, we will see a slowdown and lockdown in many advanced economies which are trying to open up. So I think there are uh, two, uh, divergent views uh, for many economies. Vaccination is the key to control this uh, virus. The economic outlook is hampered by supply chain and logistical uh, challenges. So in my opinion, I don't see the global economy recovering before 2023. Uh, uh, what are the general sentiments on the ground globally about recovery? Some multilateral institutions, the IMF, are presenting a rosy outlook for 2022. And now we know that the Delta variant is, of course, uh, creating impact and spreading in advanced economies. What's your view on that? I don't see a rosy picture coming in 2022 because the economic confidence is pretty low. Consumer spending is going down. It might be up in U.S., but globally you have to look at 194 countries. The consumer spending is down. 
and most importantly macroeconomic stability has become a huge question mark globally so i think in my opinion a global economy will continue to go through a lot of challenges in 2022 or maybe in the first half of 2023 we can expect global economy to recover uh, by h2 2023 uh, with vaccination is the key to get the economy back on track and mm. if you pick up the latest report of mckenzie which says how to get global economy 40% of the global economy uh, back into the pre covid low uh, it has mentioned two three important variables we have to improve the skill set of those people who have been unemployed during this covid situation vaccination is important uh, innovation in medical and health facilities are important uh, countries they need to have contingency plan how to deal with future viruses that might hit the global economy so i think that report clearly uh, nails uh, what is required at the moment for global economy that investment in healthcare innovation a skill set improvement of those unemployed uh, so that we can have macroeconomic stability and economic confidence comes back into the economy And finally, Shan, uh, the ringgit uh, was close lower with the strengthening dollar touching about 4.23 yesterday, and political hiccups in the parliament. Uh, do you think ringgit can bounce back from here? What role do you think Bank Negara should play now when uncertainty is getting uh, a bit challenging, a bit tough to handle? Result, we have not changed our outlook for ringgit for this year. We still stand by a position that we shared in January uh, 2021. 3.67 and 4.10 which is based on that oil prices are going up uh, oil prices are up by 50% year to date and us dollar is will continue to depreciate if you see the june numbers mm. uh, trade figures are up by 26% exports are up by 27% so despite the challenges uh, hiccup we still foresee that ringgit is going to bounce back and confidence in ringgit will come uh, will come back as far as bank nigara is concerned i think as a financial market commentator uh, bank nigara has played its card very strategically and very smartly by reducing the discount rate by 125 basis point last year as you know any policy instrument any policy lever that the central bank or the government uh, undertakes it takes good 12 to 15 months of that policy lever to make an impact so i think bank nigara has played it's card intelligently they have maintained uh, structural stability of ringgit despite many challenges uh, globally and overall they have given a clear direction a forward guidance to the ringgit so i think bank nigara has played uh, its card very smartly at this point of time in the last 18 months On that note, we thank you very much, Shan Syed, Ketua Pakar Ekonomi Jua IQI kerana memberikan, ataupun memberikan kita pandangan berkenaan dengan berita ekonomi pada minggu ini dan juga ulasan berkenaan dengan laporan laporan ekonomi pada minggu ini. Dan seterusnya, Astro Awani Link pada Selasa 3 Ogos jam 9 malam akan membawakan sekali lagi workshop Health Matters series yang bertajuk Do You Have Corona Phobia? Understanding why obsessing is very bad for you kepada yang sering berasa tidak selesa atau kegelisahan melampau untuk meneruskan aktiviti harian ketika pandemik ini wajib untuk menyertai sesi kali ini pakar kami akan membantu anda untuk mengharungi waktu yang sukar ini sertai kami dengan daftar sekarang di link.astroawani.com dan kita kembali berehat seketika kembali selepas ini